What's up, guys? So, uh, just wanted to upload this last video too while I was fresh with everything that's going on right now. Um, we'll be talking about China, okay? So, straight up and down, this is going to be essentially completely biased. It's going to be all my opinion. Um, there's facts um, sprinkled in, but this is tinfoil hat time. And if you're not interested in that, then, you know, I'm giving you a fair warning up front. This is not going to be a uh, positive, negative thing, right? So, uh, sorry, completely opinion. So I was thinking a lot to my head, like who really had the most to gain from this? And off the jump, it was always like, well, nobody, right? If you think about it, the, what I mean by this is coronavirus, obviously, right? Who really had the most to gain from this? You see all this news coming out about, um, you know, this might be from a lab or whatnot, right? When I first thought that I was, you know, as a businessman, I was like, dude, no way, hold the hell up. Even if you didn't like Trump, even if you didn't like um, maybe America in, in meddling in your affairs, I'm speaking on behalf of China, you wouldn't want to cripple the world economy because your people, you know, Chinese people and the Chinese government need them to work in order to sell the goods, in order for them to continue to get money, in order for them to spread their, their influence. But the more and more and more as information starts coming out, and then I start seeing, you know, news articles like, uh, wow, China's up to 100% capacity, you know, they're, 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 they're killing it. Then my tinfoil hat comes on, and I'm like, wait a minute, dude, let's take a step back. So my beef with China, and why I'm kind of pissed that no president before Trump really addressed them or try to check them. They've been able to run rampant. They're, a, I, I personally believe they're a, uh, they're a tyrant. You know, they, they oppress uh, freedom of their own people. Uh, look no further than Hong Kong. If, if, you know, you need more proof other than, you know, the concentration camps they got going on and God knows what else that they're doing. And um, the way they're spreading influence is through money. So a lot of you guys hear about, you know, uh, oh, they're devaluing their currency. What does that mean? What does that mean? So essentially we want, you would want your dollar to be weaker. I know that sounds crazy, but American dollar is so strong because everyone else keeps weakening and ours stays stronger because you got to hedge to something. So let's take a step back. When you print more of your money, your currency becomes weaker. Okay. A totally different, totally different ball game of the United States because we're not printing to give just to me and you. They're buying, they're printing for quantitative easing, which is you know, not that complex. Basically, they're buying stocks and bonds and stuff that me and you never touch. It's not that money that the American government, the Federal Reserve is printing, isn't coming into the mine in your pockets. It's not coming to the real economy. It's coming to the artificial economy. Okay, so let's separate those two. But let's go to China. As American dollars come in, as European dollars come in, as rupees come in, because they're creating you know, products and shipping out all over the world. Once you start collecting all that, you know, money, your money starts becoming worth more. They devalue it by printing more and passing it around. And by doing that and manipulating their currency and forcing it to go down, they keep labor cheap in their country, therefore destroying Detroit, therefore destroying the whole Midwest. And, and how is it destroying the Midwest or, or America and Detroit and stuff? Because if it's cheaper labor there, those companies aren't going to want to produce here. So that's why this trade war is like top of a bunch of other layers. So what's their end goal here? When I took my trip to Malaysia, we went to the embassy and uh, I kind of knew that this was going on in the background because I'm obsessed with these guys. I think they're the biggest threat to the world, but... You know, they said that in Malaysia, they're helping them build, you know, trains and, and railroads all the way down to the, their port next to Singapore. But the American government stepping in and saying, hey, we want to help with this contract because it's really, I guess, ambiguous in a sense. It's not really clearly defined like, hey, what happens if Malaysia can't pay? Does China just get to arbitrarily just take that land and say, OK, that port's ours. Now this is ours, even though it's your sovereign country. So. We're stepping in to say, hey, hold on there, bud. Let's make sure the P's and the Q's are right, right? But you look around the world and China very quietly, you know, no, Xi Jinping will stand up there and say, we're not like America. We're not going to come in and just, you know, demand you do things. Oh, no, no, no. We're going to help you. But are they helping? 
No, they're not. What they're really doing is they're giving money to these poor nations and they're helping them develop, but their influence is growing. Their UN seats are going up. So when they go to the South Asia Sea, you'll see the Ch South Chinese Sea, that was supposed to be 100 miles from your from the border of China, 100 miles up. All the natural gas and stuff like that was supposed to be China's. And you have all the other countries there sharing it. China goes and makes a fake fucking island three miles out, and then they push their rights out. There's no one there to check them. And they're starting to become like a global power in that area. So that's why we got our ships down there. And, you know, we're, you know, we're, re we're, we're ready, baby, you know, at any moment ready to pop off. But the goal for China and this whole thing and this whole, you know, little chess match is they want to be us. They want to be the world power. And I think Trump's done a good job at, at, you know, checking them and saying, hold up, you know, raising the alarm on Huawei and all these other companies. But we're playing checkers. They're playing chess. Trump, love him, hate him. I don't really care for this. It doesn't matter to me. OK, even if he's here for another four years, he's gone. Someone else will come in. Someone else's policies will come in. Someone else's viewpoint will come in. America is shifting every two years to every four years politically and every six years you know, on a, on a major scale. China has one man. China has one vision. And they have time. They are not worried about the four or five year plan. They're worried about the 40, 50 year plan. And they will execute. Because they got something we don't. And the only thing that comes close to them is our power as a Supreme Court. But that really guides our nation. It doesn't really direct the day to days or have instantaneous moves, moving. They are going to be a huge problem in the future. So coronavirus, why them now? When you start looking at it, you cripple the American economy. You destroy small business. You cause more uproar politically. You divide us. You conquer us. You produce. You're China. You start producing. You start getting money. You start spreading your influence more and more. You force other countries to print their cash to devalue their currency more. You drive up their debt. You collapse their economies within. Who's left standing? Is America left standing? Maybe. In the long run, I still believe in the property rights here. <coughs> Jesus, excuse me. I still believe in us. But does the rest of the world believe in us? That's the real question. Do we need the rest of the world? That's another debate. But for here, China, at the end of it, Jesus, <coughs> they gave me coronavirus. No, I'm joking. They, they're the ones standing tall. They're the ones that are looking at, at, at as, the, as the real true power here. Now, is this all conspiracy theory? Maybe. Is it better for them to just keep playing the game that they were? Yeah. I mean, in the long run, yeah. As they, they, well, you want to come there, Apple, you want to come there, you build the road, you build the factory. We're not going to pay for it. You're paying for us to get developed. Why would we ever want to put in our own money until we get so strong that we can flex on everybody, right? That was the original plan. But this might expedite things. This also might be a huge, huge leverage ploy. If we're having negotiations back and forth with them, and all of a sudden we lose our economic standing and our and our power and our clout to be able to say, oh, you know, whatever, because our currency is dropping, we're inflating, our taxes are going to be rising, our politicians are fighting. How much easier is it to negotiate some with somebody in dis distress and when they're desperate than they are when they're strong and they're firm? Right? China did have the most did have the most to gain from this. Now, am I blaming the Chinese government for creating this biochemical weapon and, and it's not just a flu? I don't know, man. I don't have enough facts. I mean, everything's all arbitrary. And you know me, man. I don't like it. Like, either way, you know, no matter what it is, you, you, you I don't want to just accuse people. I can make an assumption. I can make a, you know, me and you, I'm talking to you as a friend as I would just, just you know, talking shit. I can't, I don't have a leg to stand on that say 110% like, it was made, you know, in a lab. It was designed. It was implemented for this cause. But to me, it adds up, you know, when you sit back and look at the longer picture, you stop worrying about the short, you look at the bigger picture. Who has the most to gain? How would they position themselves? Why would they position themselves? And it just adds up that it would be them. So that's just my viewpoint on it. And uh, I mean, I hope I'm wrong, man. That's it's pretty... You know, to destroy so many lives to get power. 
But then again, anything they do, anything they're responsible for, it would not shock me for one second. So these are my viewpoints, man. I mean, like I said, uh, you know, not positive, negative thing. This is just what I think. So I wonder uh, what you guys think. And if you guys are kind of on the same page with me or totally disagree, I'd love to hear it. Hey, if you could share this with one person, really help me grow the page. Still trying to get to 500. Uh, appreciate your time.